Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, back to the Hopkinton Senior Center for um, a part of really a series of presentations that I've been doing now. Uh, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. For those of you who don't know me, Myrick O'Connell, there are 60 of us. That's a lot. We have uh, 20 of us in Westboro and 40 of us in uh, Worcester. Um, everybody does something there, and that way I only get to do this, which is elder law, which is the stuff that I really like to do. So, um, as you know, if you've come to one of these presentations or if you've seen them on TV, um, elder law is about a little bit about law. It's a lot about elders, and it's really about, in, in many ways, certainly teaching you or helping you understand the things that you can qualify for as benefits and when that's appropriate, but it's also uh, letting you know what the programs are that are available to you just by virtue of your being older, right? Um, and who the people are who are involved in those programs so that you feel comfortable talking to them. Because so often when someone will call me and say, well, so how, what, what is the answer to this question? And I'll always say, well, the answer to the question is that you have to go talk to so-and-so, you know, because they'll know. Now, the purpose of this particular presentation, I'm very glad that a few people came, but the purpose of this presentation is for everybody else. The reason for this presentation is for folks especially who are getting older, maybe retired, but, but have never been to the senior center, right? And have never called anybody at Bay Path Elder Services and don't realize, therefore, all of the things that are happening and programs that are available that they should be aware of, right? So that they feel comfortable um, even though there's not an emergency in their lives and there isn't like a crisis and you know they don't have to do this, they feel comfortable coming to the Senior Center, which is this great place in Hopkinton, uh, and calling Bay Path Elder Services. So I want to start off. So we're talking about my old friends Frank and Mary. You've all met them if you've been here before and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Um, and Frank and Mary own a house. Um, their, goal, their goal in life is to stay in that house until they die and be buried in the backyard. Uh, and then if there's anything left over to divide it up among their kids. Does that sound familiar? This is kind of everybody's, many people's basic estate plan. Um, they own a house in Hopkinton. It's kind of a little house now because property values are going crazy again, are starting to, are climbing. Uh, he has an IRA worth 150000 They have an annuity worth 100. They have bank accounts worth 75. So they've got total assets of $625,000, which is not nothing. They have no mortgage. Um, Frank's income is $2,000 a month, $1,500 from Social Security and $500 from a pension. Mary's income is half of his. She gets a Social Security check for $750. So their income uh, every month is about $2,750. So they're making, they're not dying, right? They're making a little over $30,000. They're paying all, unless they get a big medical emergency, they're all going to be okay. Uh, but the, so the question for them, right, is so, and they're in their house. You know, they've been in their house for years, and they really don't like going out, and they've never been to the senior center before. And why should they? Because that's where all the old people are that play bingo. And they, you know, why should they go? Um, so that's really one of the things that they that they need to be learning is what is the the Hudson the the Hopkinton Council on Aging? Who are the players like Joyce Rom and Marlene Troops? Did I pronounce that name right? Right. And what in the world do they do down here? So what I wanted to do was to basically introduce you and the people who are watching tonight to both of these people so they can collectively talk to you about what it is that happens down here, the kind of array of things that happens, what kinds of services are available, and why you should call. And, and they're going to tell you, by the way, that if you've got an issue that involves a particular set of, of, of programs for which you may be entitled to government benefits, they're going to connect you with the folks at Bay Path Elder Services. Raise your hand if you've heard of Bay Path Elder Services. That's good. More than half. That's very un unusual. Most people, most places I go, less than a third of the people in the room have heard of Bay Path. Bay Path is the great um, entity. It's a nonprofit. It covers this area, covers 26 other communities. They are the people through which all federal and state money for elders goes. They are the great fountain of money. So you have a reason to know them and be friends with them and know what kinds of programs might be, uh, you might be eligible for. So we're going to then, we're going to later talk to Christine about how those programs work. But first, first I want to introduce Joyce and Marlene. Thank you very much for coming. I was so delighted to hear that one of them got stuck in traffic on the way in because they're not used to coming at this hour. They don't know how bad it is, no, right? It's, it's true. So it's all yours. Well, okay. 
here at the Senior Center, everyone, if I want to mention right away, everyone of every age is welcome. It is in mind for those 60 and older, but if somebody wants to come who's in their 40s, 30s, 50s, come on up. There's, um, and you don't have to feel old to come in. You, you don't know. Old can, people don't come here. Right. Yeah. Old people so stay, stay at home. At home. <laughs> People come up here and join in with things. And as I started to say, you don't have to be a member of Hopkinton either, but a Hopkintonian will not be bumped for somebody out of town. So any age can come up and another town participant can come up, but Hopkinton people take preference and those 60 and over take pre uh, preference. Mm -hmm. So um, there's so many programs that will keep you young because you're going to keep moving with some of them. You're going to stimulate your mind. Um, you're going to meet new people, try new things. Um, just I was reading this afternoon about Alzheimer's. And um, if you keep your brain active and you decide to learn quilting, which can be, I realize, very mathematical, mm -hmm. and challenge yourself in new ways, you're going to, you're going to age better. And uh, how about you? you got something? Well, I just want to say I recognize people here, so I know they pretty much know Marlene and I and the kind of work that we do in the outreach department. But I'd like to look to us as information referral, very particularly for residents of this town or people that I see in the audience here that actually are from other communities, but we definitely consider them a part of our community. Even you have maybe aliens in this room right now. We have some <laughs> aliens, and I'm and not going to point them out. And you don't talk to them. I mean, we won't point we, them out. We, we won't, this I isn't won't a Donald Trump out, type event. We're not going to, they're not going to stick out. Right? We're, okay. we're happy to have people from other right. communities okay. and definitely uh, lend our expertise to people that are outside the community of Hopkinton, even though, again, primarily we want to be helping the people of this community here. And our information is vast. What I think Marlene and I probably a combined, I, I'm going to say this, 70 years maybe, I don't know, of working in the field of, yeah, you're right. of um, working human, in human services, human I'll services, say. As it, yeah. So that's a scary number, but that's probably more true than not. So we have a vast amount of information. And for some of you um, here that you know I have worked at Bay Path in the past under um, Christine Alessandro, so I have a little bit of information about some of the programs, even though they change very rapidly. I think I could give people a nice overview of what Bay Path can offer, start you in the right direction, and then we call Bay Path, can put in referrals, Marlene and I, for Bay Path and all the great programs that they offer. And um, we do a lot of that here. I think just, just give people a really good overview of what the questions they may have to live independently in their home, Think about the aging services out there, and they change all the time. And sometimes people don't even understand what an assisted living is and the kind of services you may get there. So Marlene and I have files and files of resources. We keep things very much up to date and reach out to even places like Bay Path for some of the new programs to educate ourselves so we know a little bit what's going on there when they have changes, as they always do. So I think we're a great team. We welcome people at all times I, I usually i'm not here at this time so i want to hesitate and say not at all times but you can sure leave a message in the middle of the night and when, when we get here we will answer your questions so I, I think we are a good team and we're happy to help get you in the right direction even if you're not sure what you want to ask come and sit in our office we'll make sense of your words and now once again this is for a lot of folks who are who are, kind of, who are watching can you just give people a sense of kind of in a typical day what happens here and then I'd also like to talk, if you could, just to talk a little bit about the Shine Counselor and, Medi and Medicaid D, just because okay. that's that time of year. So, yeah. well, because, because my, it's been my experience that nobody knows more about Medicaid D than the trained Shine Counselor. Then it's, it's, I always tell people, and they come up every year, and you've got to call the Senior Center and talk to the Shine Counselor. Right. Shine is an acronym for Serving Health Information Needs of Everyone. And the health information, health information, it used to be elders, now it's everyone. Is it everyone or elders? Yeah, I think. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. No, no, thank you. For and um, and that, that happened like two years ago. Thank you. Because um, they realized that health insurance information is changing so rapidly, you can't keep up with it. Now, when I started an outreach mm, almost 20 years ago, we used to keep up with it. But the government saw that, wait a minute, this, this isn't working. It's changing so often, different rules, different windows of opportunity to get into the programs, different needs for pharmaceutical, whatever your physical 
uh, needs might be for medications. You need to have your money spent the best way. A SHINE counselor can help you do that. So a SHINE is a resource that I work with. If someone has health insurance questions, I'll say, you need to make an appointment with a SHINE counselor because the SHINE worker, f and it's no charge, they can tell you what is the best health supplemental health insurance policy you should have for your particular need. You have Medicare, and then you need a supplemental policy, and your money best spent, would it be with Blue Cross, um, Tufts Preferred, whatever plan for your particular needs, they can guide you towards. Um, and Arthur, what was so your talk to me about a partic about a day. Tell me about a day. A uh, day, okay. Yeah. So day doesn't usually run this long, right? Usually no. that you guys close no. about like five. five. Right. And mm. also Joyce and I, outreach workers, we're often down the hall doing our thing. People come into the center, and it's a hopping place. It's in the mornings, people come in. There's different programs. There's people could participate in a, a yoga program, a stretching program come and um, relax afterwards, stay for lunch. Lunch starts at 11.30, $4 for the best meal you ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, now, do you make those meals on, on site? Or the meals are made on Every site. Day. We have oh. two, uh, three Happy chefs. Meals. They alternate days. Um, it, did I already say it's only $4? No, Beverage, it's choice of super salad, and entree choice, and then dessert. So do you make the meals for like the Meals on Wheels people in the, t in the no, town? No, no. So you're meals totally on just wheels, for people here. Just That's for great. people here. It That's is great. truly like a restaurant yeah. experience, rather like European seating. There's no reservations. Mm -hmm. You come and you sit down where there's an empty spot at a table. You'll meet new people. You'll meet your old friends. You can have um, a nice relaxing lunch. And then uh, there is a pool hall that's very popular with a lot a of the pool. gentlemen. Oh, well, I, was say, I missed the pool. <laughs> Not <laughs> yet, but you never know. <laughs> but the pool room is very popular uh, with mm -hmm. gentlemen and um, and there's pools happening and sometimes there's um, there's different activities that could go on. You could join the chorus um, and sing along and everything is pretty oh. casual. Were you suggesting something? Piano lessons. Uh, piano lessons. Yeah, piano. <laughs> That's right. That's new, right? Yeah. That's new. Yeah. And if you want to sit and be quiet and you can read, and some people just like to have, you don't want to be isolated. So come on up. You, you don't always have to join in either. You mm -hmm. can sit by the fireplace, especially with the days are going to be getting um, shorter mm -hmm. in daylight. You, you, you want to get out and kind of mix up with people sometime. Even if you don't want to be hopping around, you could sit and read quietly. Mm -hmm. You could join into an activity. And the center closes at 4 o'clock. On Fridays, we close at 2. Um, so that's about a typical day. If you think you have a question for an outreach worker, either Joyce or myself, um, come and see us. We're kind of like, uh, in a way, well, helping seniors live independently. If there's a question, we'll find an answer. Um, so if you're Frank and Mary, this is just helping you out. Mm. You know, and it's so easy if you're Frank and Mary. And I know, because I mean, I'm 65 myself, you know, and, we, and it's me and my wife, you know, we, and you start kind of shrinking down, you know, you just kind of you stay in your house, you know, and you stay, but, but you, you want to stay connected with this kind of broader community. It's really right. important. The community really. is important, and yeah. um, it gives you something to look forward to. And we're also always looking for volunteers, even mm. if you want to volunteer one day a week, one day a month. Um, uh, one of the fun things to do uh, is to be a volunteer as a wait staff in the dining room. Um, and you can make it work to your schedule. We also always are looking for volunteer drivers. Somebody who, sometimes it's like pay it back or pay it forward. Mm -hmm. You still are driving, you have your license. Um, people call up here and we give them rides to any medical appointment. So that's an activity we're always looking to fill too. And that's, that's, an activ that's um, a benefit you could request because you're a Hopkinton uh, resident is a ride to a medical uh, appointment. Do you go to medical appointments outside of town? We can go to Worcester, in a oh, wow. Natick, Framingham, Framingham Milford. Boston, unfortunately yeah. Boston. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, and we have a great thrift store. Oh yeah. And shop. medical supply, I was going to say closet, but it's really a shed. Of medical supplies. Just like durable medical equipment? Durable that medical kind of larger equipment. stuff. Yep. It's just it's great. What do you do? You rent that out? Or you just no, no. Um, we get uh, people who make donations if you need um, a commode, and that is the, the apparatus that fits either independently if you've had some 
um, operation or some situation where you can't get to the bathroom, you'll have the bedside commode where you'll have a, the toilet facility right at your bedside, take one step, or the same apparatus can fit over without any plumber. You just raise the seat up, these, the apparatus fits over the toilet seat, and now you've, you've raised it up. If you've had a knee surgery, you don't have to sit down as far. Um, we've got shower benches, mm -hmm. wheelchairs, wheelchairs, walkers, um, walkers with seats. Now these items can be very expensive. Mm -hmm. So before you have to purchase one, give us a call and there's no charge. There is a $25 uh, fee for renting essentially a wheelchair. Just the wheelchairs. Just the wheelchairs though. Uh, and we have transport chairs and wheelchairs. Difference being wheelchairs are the kind that you sit in yourself and you can manipulate yourself by yourself by rolling the wheels. The wheelchair, the, a transport chair, somebody has to be behind you and like push it, which is very good for getting somebody in and, and out of car. doctors and the yeah. car and into doctor's appointments. Very lightweight and those are hard to come by. Yeah. And we usually have a few of those to loan out. So uh, we're pretty busy here. And also fuel assistance. I don't yep, want to forget to tell up. you with the heating season coming on, coming on um, South Middlesex Opportunity Council, SMOC has funds that they get from the federal government. <laughs> the government gives it to SMOC. SMOC gives it to um, families or individuals who qualify according to income. So contact us. We can give you a quick answer over the phone mm -hmm. whether or not you qualify you? Yeah. because it's really household members. How many in the household? Household of one or 10 and what the total spendable income is coming into the household. And we'll have something in the next month's newsletter I think as well yes. through an outreach so, block. So. And also I want you to know that what we do is confidential. If, mm -hmm. if you contact us as and we're putting our outreach hats on, we don't share information. So if you come into the senior center for some reason, I'm just going to say, you know, hi, and, and they'll never know, somebody will never know that you saw me like last week about some issue that you needed um, help with in my office. Anything else? And they're like really friendly. <laughs> but I, I guess really I would friendly. close with that. I think that's, that's one, once again, that's one of the points of this is like, let me, you don't, you don't, go after a job like theirs because you're grumpy. You know, I mean, you just don't, right? So it's like, it's a great place with people who are just really friendly, who can really help you, and are knowledgeable, but also just kind of get it. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. So that's all about the Hopkinton Senior Center. But so now I'd like you to, to, to listen. Yeah, they're great. That's right, they get an award, they get all kinds of stuff. Um, <laughs> But now I wanted, to t I wanted you to hear about um, Bay Path Elder Service. Bay Path is a big agency. It's having how, how many employee employees now? About 120. About 120 employees. And this is the executive director, Christine Alessandro, has been kind enough to come today just to talk to you about some of the things that they do. Because I think it, it's, 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 it's located physically in Marlboro, where, so it's just up the street. But they come here a lot. Right? And Christine can give you a sense of the variety of their programs. They are probably, I deal with a lot of folks in a lot of these kinds of, these are called Aging Services Access Points, or ASAPs. There are 27 of them in the state. Uh, each one has a particular region. This is probably the most progressive ASAP in the state. I think they're just wonderful. So anyway, Christine Alessandro. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. It was great to be here tonight. Um, so I saw a few hands of people who do not know what is Bay Path Elder Services. And often it's just shortened to Bay Path. Well, we are not the VOTEC, all right? We are not the Humane Society. We are what's called an Aging Services Access Point, which is a state designation, meaning we have certain programs as that designation. And we're also the Area Agency on Aging. And many of you may remember Area Agencies on Aging were established around 1965 under President Johnson when he signed the Older Americans Act. That established area agencies on aging, and that's federal money that comes down to us, but mostly goes back out to the community. What do we do? We provide an array of uh, programs and services to older adults, caregivers, professionals, and younger persons with disabilities. What we are finding anymore is that someone 70 or 72 might be taking care of their 96-year-old mother. It's becoming more and more common as people are living older. So just because you're older, over 65, doesn't mean you're necessarily not going to be a caregiver, or you may be a caregiver for a spouse. 
We also have a program for younger persons with disabilities. It's called the Medicaid Personal Care Attendant Program, or you can be over 65 and get in that program. We actually serve 14 communities in Metro West. That is our area, and they're up here. Hopkinton is one of the communities that we serve. I think of Bay Path more as an umbrella because we have so many services and programs. When I came to Bay Path 17 years ago, we had about 42 full and part-time employees. Now we have 120. We've more than doubled our programs and services, and we're growing. Why are we growing? Because the population of people over the age of 60 is growing. Did you know that every day in the United States, 10,000 people turn 65. The baby boomers are here. They're turning 65, and it's going to be the largest group that's going to be in the United States. So think of what power you have as a voting block. You have a lot of power, people over the age of 65. Our program, some of the ones that you might be familiar with, Meals on Wheels. We're the Meals on Wheels people. We provide information and referral, and, and Joyce spoke about this. We can provide information on local resources, state resources, national resources. But I always say, if you need somebody to shovel your driveway or rake your leaves, start with the senior center. People here will know the resources that are in your community like the back of their hand. They, if, and if they don't know the answer, you might have a question more about state resources they'll give us a call. We work hand in hand with the Senior Center to make sure that you get the information that you need. The State Home Care Program is actually our biggest program. In our 14 communities, we have 1,200 older adults enrolled in our State Home Care Program. The State Home Care Program, the requirements are that you are age eligible, which is over the age of 60, need el eligible, which means you need a certain amount of impairments, and income eligibility. But don't think that we're just an, an agency that serves low-income, frail people. That's not correct at all. If you're over our income limit for home care programs, we can look at other ways of getting you services, whether it be for, through an over-income respite program. And you might think, well, I don't need services. I'm independent at home. But if you fall tomorrow and you break your hip or break your elbow or break your foot. By, by, by having a, a what fall on it? A kayak, a kayak. on your foot. Mm -hmm. You might need services, maybe for just a month to help you get over that hump. And we can help you out with that. So better to know us before you need us. And is there any asset requirement regarding these programs? There is absolutely no asset requirement. The, uh, so Frank and Mary. Mm -hmm. Most of the services she's now talking about, Frank and Mary qualify for. Absolutely. Right, there is no asset requirement. No asset requirement, either liquid asset or hard asset, such as a house. We do not look at what you've got in the bank. We do not look at what you have in your IRA. It is your income only. And for many people, you might not have a huge income, but have a lot of assets in the bank. And you might say, well, I don't want to spend private pay services because they're really expensive. Well, you might be able to get those same services through Bay Path, and you're only going to have a copay per month instead of paying the full cost. So if you wanted to make a referral to Bay Path for a home care service, you would call and you would give us this information. The person's name, address, telephone, their date of birth, their emergency contact, any medical information that they might have, what, how are they functioning in terms of their activities of daily living and what's called instrumental activities of daily living, which is managing finances and preparation, meal preparation. And what we do, we have an intake assessment specialist come out and see that person, and then they will do a full intake on them. We also need your financial information, and usually we ask you to have that ready for when we get there. But once again, remember, they'll come to you. They will actually come to you. I mean, they'll give you, they'll talk to you over the phone and then just show up, right? Well, if you want them to show up, right? Just to give you, just to talk about what your situation is and whether they can help you, right? right? And say when we get there, we, we determine or you feel that you don't want home care services, we can talk about what the other options might be available for you. 
We can have other folks talk to you about what your other options may be besides home care. Now, if you do need home care services, what will happen is a case manager and a nurse, if personal care is needed, will come out and, and develop a service plan with you. That service plan is driven by you. You tell us what you want. You tell us what you think that you need. We're not going to tell you. You tell us. What do you need? You need help with perhaps getting in the shower. You can do the shower yourself, but I need help getting in the shower. Okay. That's your service plan. We're going to have somebody help you get in the shower and out of the shower. And we strive to have the days and hours meet your needs. Mm, unfortunately, not everybody can get a shower at 8 o'clock in the morning. We would need 900 personal care workers to give everybody a shower at 8 o'clock in the morning. So we, we ask for some flexibility. It's just not possible. So other services that are under home care, Lifeline, which is the button that you press, help, I've fallen and I can't get up. We can provide that under home care. We can do Meals on Wheels. Under home care, we can do Meals on Wheels if you are not on home care. Meals, and I will tell you, Meals on Wheels are actually pretty good. We do testing. Uh, the staff does quality assurance testing once a year, the month of March. All the staff get to try home-delivered meals. It's my favorite month because I get to try home-delivered meals. And then we give a very honest critique of home-delivered meals. And our nutrition department then goes back to the caterer and works with them on what we have found out. Now, Christine, do, do you happen to know offhand who, who prepares the meals that come to Hopkinton? Our caterer is Bateman. The catering services are located in Lancaster. They make all the meals up there in bulk, and they bring them down to the designated drop-off points, and then we package them up for home delivery. We've also started doing uh, cold meals in the summer. You might have a choice of meals. We've also started doing ethnic meals. We have a Chinese meal program in Framingham. So we're trying to diversify and really branch out. And we're also the people that do the farmer's market coupons in the summertime. And some of you may have taken advantage of that. So again, th these are some of the services you can get under home care if you qualify for home care. Before I finish up and give this back to Arthur, I mentioned we're not only for low-income, frail people. We have a number of programs and services you might be interested in taking, in partaking in. For example, healthy living programs. We do chronic disease self-management programs. We do a matter of balance. We have some healthy, nutri healthy eating for successful living. So there's really something for everybody. But again, know us before you need us. Give us a call. Look at our programs. So if you're just interested in what we might have to offer, give us a call and talk to us. So thank you. Christine, thank you so much. Thanks, Arthur. They like, I mean, they're really terrific. They just, they kind of do it all. But just to give you a sense of this, so remember Frank and Mary, right? And those are their assets, right? And there's their income. So Frank, remember, for purposes of qualifying for all the things that Christine just talked about, the assets don't count. So they would qualify for all of this. Christine had mentioned sometimes there is a copay. So let me give you a sense of that. The, the package that Christine talked about often ends up being worth about $600 a week. Month. To, month. Excuse me, $600 a month, month. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. to the elder, right? Yes. It, it is some kind of package of services. So the question is, if you're Frank and Mary, so are you eligible? And what would your copay be? So I did the chart. I did this on purpose so you couldn't read it, right? So this is the chart that goes through all different kinds of income levels and says how much your copay is. If you're Frank and Mary and you're earning with their earning, which is more than $30,000 um, a, a, a month, or more than $3,000 a month, sorry, your copay is $101 a month, right? So you're getting $600 in services a week times for about $2,400, $2,500 in services, your copay is $100. If you're making over $30,000 and you have assets of over $600,000, right? So this is just, so the short answer to Bay Path is pretty much you always qualify. I mean, just about everybody qualifies for their programs and it's worthwhile for just about everybody. I'm gonna take questions right at the end. I just wanna make sure I get through some of these. So. The only other things that you need to do, as I mentioned, for, for folks who are you know, retiring and trying to figure this stuff out, 
You want to keep control of your life, you need to have three documents, healthcare proxy, MOLST, and power of attorney. Everybody know what a MOLST form is? Raise your hand if you know what a MOLST form is. Oh, good. That means I'll, I got one thing I'm going to teach you. Healthcare proxies, got to have them, right? As you, everybody should have them, but definitely once you get to be my age, 65 and older, you got to have them. Because if you've got a problem and you can't make a medical decision and you don't have a proxy, somebody has to go to court and get a guardian appointed for you. Even if your spouse is there, she's technically not able to make, he or she is not able to make medical decisions for you. To get a, a health care proxy, it's real easy. You need it signed by two witnesses. That proxy can make all medical decisions for you, but only after your doctor has said in writing that you're incapable of making those decisions. And then as soon as your doctor certifies in writing that you're back to being capable, the proxy stops. Not to get started again until your doctor certifies later on that you can't. A couple of things have often come up regarding these proxies. One of them, people will say, well, I don't want to give anybody the ability to send me to a nursing home, right? That's actually a common question. Um, and, and so the question is, can your proxy send you to a nursing home if you don't want to go? Interestingly, the answer is no. No. And the reason for that is that, and there's actually a case on this, the reason for that is if, if, a, if, you, if you're coming, going to the nursing home with your daughter who says, Ma, you've got to stay, and you say, I don't want to be here, technically with that, what you just did legally is you revoked her health care proxy. Right? That's what the court cases have said. There was a case that went up on, some, on a woman that got admitted to McLean's by one of her kids and said, I don't want to be here, and fought it out, and it turned out the judge said, you, you are right. Unless a court orders it, you don't have to stay because you revoked your proxy. A um, couple of other things. One, one, people often don't realize that your proxy actually controls your body after your death for the purposes of deciding whether any parts of your body are going to get donated. So if you are concerned about not donating parts of your body to the New England Organ Bank or somebody else, you may actually want to say that right in your proxy. Uh, a MOLST form, or Medical Orders for Life Sustaining Treatment, M-O-L-S-T, um, is replacing the so-called DNR form, or do not resuscitate form. Do not resuscitate means, if my heart has stopped, don't try to make it start again. Why would you say that? Well, because it's, A, it's very painful to try to make it start again. Typically, it means pressing on your ribs so hard that you're going to break most of them in order to press on your heart so that you can kind of push the heart up and down to get it going again. Um, if you are over 80, I think the statistic is that your chances of living more than 30 days uh, if, they, if they've done CPR on you, are 5% or less. Your chances of actually getting resuscitated are only about 25%. And if you do get resuscitated, the chances are it's going to be not for long. So for many older people, they may say, you know, it, there's a point at which I don't want to go through that, right? So one of the things that the MOLST form covers is that issue. By the way, the MOLST form, technically, you're not the important signature on the MOLST form. It's the doctor's signature. Technically, a MOLST form is a doctor's order to the other people down the food chain, the nurses and the EMTs and everybody else saying, here's what you do with this patient. And it comes from me. I'm the doctor. So you would assent to this, but the doctors do them. And if you want to know where to find the form, call your doctor. They all have them. And the Department of Public Health has been telling these doctors to talk to you about them. So if the doctor hasn't been talking to you about them, shame on him or her, right? Ask him or her to go through the form with you. So it deals with uh, do not resuscitate issues. It deals with some other stuff, but I'm just going to mention a couple of other things. Where do you keep the moles form? On your refrigerator. That's the only place. Why is that? Because all the EMTs have been trained when they come to your house, their protocol is if you're on the floor, they get to the house, the only one place they're going to look for the moles form, and that's on the refrigerator. After that, if it's not there, they're just going to do what they have to do because they're busy. You're on the floor. They've, they're in a hurry. Okay? So if you want it to take effect, have it on the refrigerator. Um, remember that the person you named as your proxy can always overrule whatever you've said on this most form. The proxy has total control over all medical decisions if, if you're incapacitated. So remember to trust the proxy and tell the proxy how you want to be treated. Um, other decisions that get made through this MOLST form, one of them is this whole question of CPR, which is, is that, that resusc uh, resuscitation. A second is intubation. Do you want to be intubated? Intubation means taking a pipe and throwing it, putting it down your throat into your lungs 
so that oxygen can be pushed into your lungs to make them work again. So it's done when you've stopped breathing. So do you really want that? That's one of the possibilities. There are several other issues that you can talk to your doctor about whether you want those kinds of treatment. The most important to me, though, is do not hospitalize. You can say on your MOLST form, if the CPR, if the medic finds you on the floor, don't bring me to the hospital. In other words, I want to die at home. I'm okay with this. I want to die at home. If they bring you to the hospital, we will save you. When I say we, um, I used to be on the board for many years at Marlboro Hospital, right? And I remember going to the monthly meetings and we would talk about how many people, if any, died at the hospital. And that was a big deal, right? Because if you die in our hospital, we have to report that to the Department of Public Health. If there are quite a few of them, we get investigated, all this stuff. So if you come to our hospital, we're going to save you, right? To try to get, we're going to do everything we can to try to get you back home. We're going to be as intervening, you know, interventionist. And the doctors who are there, doctors want to save people. They don't want to let people die. So if you, if you want to die at home, then you probably want a most form on your refrigerator that says, leave me home, right? Just as a thought, okay? Um, the alternative to a healthcare proxy is this whole guardianship process, which I mentioned. The other form that you ought to have besides the most and the healthcare proxy is the power of attorney so that some, the, health, the proxy does not have the power on your behalf to sign any documents for you, including, by the way, admitting you to a nursing home, right? Even if medically it's appropriate that you be there, if the, if the nursing home, if you don't have a power of attorney from the person who's being admitted, you can't sign the admission form, right? So the nursing home may not take you because you can't bind that person to pay the bill. Um, what, how, powers of attorney, do they have to be notarized? No. Do they have to be witnessed? No. Um, wh why, why, do they, why do you have them notarized? By the way, the only time you need them notarized if it's, is if it's going to be used by someone to sign a deed on somebody's behalf or another document that's recorded in the registry, a, a mortgage, for example. So why do you have them notarized? Because the person who's looking at this proxy to decide, or to this, or this power of attorney to decide whether it's valid, it's not a judge. It's not a person who's going to know that, right? It's like the bank teller, you know, or the insurance guy that you're calling to cancel the insurance contract. So you need a document that looks official. It has been my experience, everybody thinks that if a document's been notarized, it's like really official, right? So that's the only reason why you're getting it notarized, so it'll look official. I know that sounds stupid for a lawyer to be saying that, but that's the reason. Um, the, only th the other thing is, in terms of what's in there, a couple of points. If you are giving a power of attorney to somebody and, and, it, and you really want them to be able to help you, especially if you need nursing home care, somebody's got to qualify you for mass health, they've got to move assets around, make sure you say right in the power of attorney that that person has the power to make gifts on your behalf, and you say if that person has the power to give things to themselves, especially if that's your spouse. Right? I've had this situation where the husband is in the nursing home the way you qualify him for mass health is very simple. You simply shift all the assets to the wife because the wife can have a lot of assets. Except if the power of attorney from the husband to the wife doesn't give the wife the power to self-deal, to give things to herself, you can't do it. The power of attorney won't, you can't do it. Mass health has challenged those where people have used a power of attorney to shift assets from one spouse to the other and then mass health has said, but the power wasn't in there and therefore that was an invalid transfer, right? So you want to make sure that stuff's in there. Finally, uh, as opposed to healthcare proxies where you have to name one person at a time, um, and then if that person isn't serving, you name somebody else. In powers of attorney, you can name two people or more jointly and severally. And the legal effect of that is that any one of the people you've named can act on your behalf, e without the, even without the signature of the other. So that if, if you're naming, often people will name their spouse and one of their kids. So that if the spouse is also incapacitated, or busy, like being with them in the hospital, the child can handle that. So that's, that's those. The, re, the alternative to that, if you don't have a power of attorney, is a conservatorship process. Very expensive, very time consuming, a waste of time. What, one of the thing, remember, as I have just mentioned, if Frank and Mary, in the situation that I gave you, um, with that amount of money and their house, if Mary needs nursing home care, at that point, even if they've done no advanced planning, Mary can almost immediately qualify for Mass Health. And the reason is because while Mary has to have less than $2,000 in assets to qualify, 
Frank can own the home itself as long as it has a value of less than $828,000, excuse me, equity of less than $828,000, which covers a lot of homes. Um, and he can have cash of up to $119,220, but he can also have unlimited income. So in the Frank and Mary situation, if Mary needed nursing home care, even if these people had done no advanced planning, um, all that Mary would have to do, provided somebody's got a power of attorney to do this for her, would be to simply shift everything to Frank, and then Frank could buy an annuity um, to reduce his money below that $119,220, as long as that annuity calls for monthly payments over a term that's shorter than his life expectancy. That's a lot of detail, but the takeaway here is just what Frank and Mary don't have to do ahead of time if they're worried about this nursing home issue is they don't have to do, like, give it away and wait five years and do any of that. They don't have to do any of that because they can wait till the last minute. The only issue is if one of them dies, uh, if Frank dies and Mary inherits everything, then Mary needs nursing home care. She has a problem. So what you'd want to do if you're still Frank and Mary is make sure that each of your wills say that upon your death everything doesn't go to your spouse but that everything goes in trust for the benefit of your spouse. In this case, Frank and Mary would name one of their kids as the trustee. If you structure things that way, when one spouse dies, all the assets that were in that spouse's name are safe, even if the other person needs to go to a nursing home right away. So that, actually, we were just doing that with somebody this week. Somebody's got cancer, the other person is older, so we're shifting everything to the person with cancer. He's changed his will to say upon his death, everything goes in trust to the, to the daughter for the benefit of the wife. So it's a million dollars and everything will be safe. The wife has early stage dementia, so this will actually protect everything. So the point is, you can do those at, you, at the last minute. You don't, you don't have to be doing it later. I'm just gonna mention one other thing. If you are a younger person, that's really, I know some of you may even be over 70, but some of you not. So if you're a younger person and you still have the ability to buy a long-term care insurance policy, this really means if you're under 70, uh, or if you're an older person and you've got one of those old long-term care insurance policies, long-term care typically pays for nursing home care, and you think that it's, use, it's a waste because the policy is so small, um, have I got news for you. If, if you have a policy, if you want to protect your house, if you're Frank and Mary and you want to protect your house, and you have a policy that was written before March 15, 1999, and that policy says, that, 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 that if you go to a nursing home, um, the policy will pay after an elimination period, a period during which they don't have to pay, will pay $50 a day or more to the nursing home for two years. That's all it has to pay. If you have that policy and you go to the nursing home directly from your house and say that you don't intend to return home, your house is actually a safe asset. It's not a countable asset. MassHealth won't lean it, and following your death, the house is completely safe. If you have that policy, I have had this exact situation occur a lot, a lot, where an older person will have bought one of these policies, and the kids will say, and either they'll come to me and say, why should I keep this policy, right? Or the kids will come in because someone's going to the nursing home and say, well, this is no good, right? Well, it actually protects the house. It doesn't protect anything else. But if you're Frank and Mary, you may very well feel that while you want to keep control of all your cash, and even though that might get spent down, you want to save the house. You want to give the house to your kids. That's a real common thing that I hear. So that policy protects it. So if it's after that date, as long as the policy will pay $125 a day for two years, and in this case, the so-called elimination period, the period before which the policy has to start paying, can be as much as a year, right? And then it has to pay for 730 days, which is two years. And as long as you go from your home directly to the nursing home and say that you're not intending to come home, um, then, then your house is protected in any amount, any amount, right? So if you're under 70 and you want to not even ever have to think about dealing with protecting the house again and, and any planning and any of this stuff, just buy one of those policies, right? You don't need a big, huge policy that's going to pay all the nursing home costs. Mass Health is going to pay out of everything. Just a policy that's that big, okay? And, and, and by the way, in that Frank and Mary case, if, if, if Frank's dead and, Mary's had it in, 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 and Mary is getting dementia, one of the, I've had this situation too where I've told the kids, well, they say, well, what do I do? We've still got this cash. We've got all this cash. I say, just go buy mom, Mary a big house, right? 
because so Mary could, they could sell this house, they could take all of their cash and buy a $625,000 house. And as long as she's been a resident in it for a while, in a while, I would bet, was probably like a month, and then goes to the nursing home, now, all the, now everything's safe, right? Because if it was cash, they'd have to spend it down, but it's the house. It's the house. As long as she's got her little long-term care insurance policy, right, the house is safe. I'm recommending this very strongly. I do a lot of work. I'm actually doing a seminar next Monday in Nantucket and Tuesday in Martha's Vineyard. In Nantucket, everybody's house is worth $625,000, right? Like everybody. And I tell them, I say, no matter what the value of the house, though, it's safe as long as you have this little dinky policy, okay? So um, finally, uh, if, if you found that this was interesting but I talked too fast and you want to see it again, um, Frank and Mary have their own YouTube channel, and this, and this program will be on that, show, that, that channel. And that's the goal of life. Sleep well at night. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time.